pass the time over to you. Cha Cha, thank you so much. Thank you, no uh, Sidek, for inviting us. Uh, one thing for sure. Okay, let me start the share. Okay. So that oh, okay. Oh, all right. We we had we had uh we had a trial run and still you know you still have technical glitches. But uh today I'm gonna to talk about uh you have gone through two presentations, awesome presentation. If you missed it, please watch the replay. Uh one you gives you a big overview of emails, its relevance to today's market. And uh, Jeffrey has talked about the technical aspects of uh, email marketing. Both are necessary. And I want to basically for my, my session, I want to talk about the usages and also the, uh, the approaches that you can use uh, on with email marketing. So it's, it's going to be something like, so, so not, nothing to worry about. So I'm going to skip this because Jeffrey did such a great job with introduction. I honestly speaking, I couldn't have done that any better. So I'm not going to try and you know, top that. But uh, we're going to talk about three things. One is who do you send emails to? The second thing is about writing your emails. Uh, I'll quickly run through six parts of emails, especially for e-commerce. So the session today is especially for e-commerce, um, talking about campaign ideas, and finally the seven must-have automations, most of them which uh, Wan Yi and also Jeffrey will have touched upon earlier. Uh, so we're going to give you some, I'm going to give you some examples and all those things. But before that, just a quick understanding of the audience today. Um, who has been sending emails or who are already running your e-commerce store and who have been sending emails already? Just type one. Just get an idea uh, so that um, I can uh, tweak the presentation according to your needs. Just type one if you already been sending emails. So obviously, if you don't, you don't have one, then probably you have, you have not. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got some experienced operators here. So, awesome. Okay, let's see whether some of these uh, insights I'm going to share uh, maybe helps you or give you better better understanding of how you can actually leverage on emails. So, let's start with the first one. Who do you send emails to? Now, generally, there are three categories of visitors to your website, to your e-com store. One who sort of stumbled into your website, the other one who subscribed to your list, and but did not buy, right? And finally, your customers, okay? Somebody who bought something from you. So let's start the first one. So the people who stumble on your website, generally, basically, they come in through either your search, um, your ads, or either through word of mouth, okay? So they don't know much about you, but somebody recommended or they did a search and your through SEO, your website popped up, okay? And then you click on, they click on it and they go to your site. So the next thing is what you can do, uh, for example, if they're not on your list, obviously they're not on your list. You want to use pop-ups, uh, like one you have mentioned, either exit pop-ups or surprise pop-ups, for example, to with incentive to capture their emails. That's the first level or first interaction. Now, how do you capture the emails? You can either make an offer to give an incentive, all right? So it's, it's like in, you've probably heard of leak magnets, for example. So in e-com, you can actually make an offer for a discount, for a coupon. Uh, I will show you some e examples. How do you do this? And uh, basically to do an exchange for the name and email address. Or if you can, stretch it to get their birthdays because I think one you mentioned about being personalized, uh, your emails or personalizing your emails and even your mobile number so that you can also pair it with SMS marketing, okay? The primary objective at this stage is to capture the email address, all right? And the secondary objective with your pop-ups, for example, on your website, uh, it would be nice if there's any impulse purchases, they may look at it, okay, the discount sounds, you know, the free shipping, for example, or the discount sounds good, I'm gonna buy, right? There will be a nice uh, secondary uh, benefit of doing so. But end of the day, it's all about trying to get an email so that you can establish a relationship with your audience, uh, to build a bond, to be able to tell your side of the story so that the no like and trust element gets elevated. Okay, So this is one example, a pop-up uh, from Dolce Gabbana. I've been trying to, I've been, you know, wanting to say this thing for so long. It sounds so cool. Um, and in Dolce's case, right, 
they will talk about sending, for example, sign up for updates. So you notice that besides asking for email address, they, they do upfront segmentation like Jeffrey has mentioned. They ask you to select either your women, men, and also the language. That is one level of segmentation that they can do at the pop-up level already. So that when they send email related to men products, for example, obviously they send them men uh, groups and then women would have the other accessories and all things. Okay, so that's one example. The second example is Tommy, Tommy Hilfiger. In this case, you notice that they use a 20% off on your first purchase. So that's another nice incentive for the for a casual browser to sign up uh, by giving their email address, right? And then you have this little exclusivity kind of nudge and say, join the club. Because people want to be part of a community, people want to be part of a club, all right? So languaging or copywriting for your pop-ups are very important, okay? And finally, you have this uh, Gaiam. Gaiam is basically a yoga-centric uh, store. They sell mats, they sell meditation products and all those things. But take note that in Gaiam's case, they actually, uh, the interesting thing they did with a pop-up is they use a different form factor. It's not your standard square or a rectangle, but they actually made it, uh, put some effort into designing the pop-up. So it jumps out and is also in line with their brand positioning also and also their brand design. Okay, so in Gaim's case, they talk about staying in the know with deals and discounts. So they did not offer any discounts, uh, but in Gaim's case, understandable because people who come to this store or stumble upon this store are not your general, unless you are, not, you are in yoga or you have an interest in meditation, very unlikely that you come to this store. So they know your pop-up contents has to be relevant to your visitors. Okay. So the next uh, category will be talking about subscribe, but they don't buy. So let's say they subscribe to your newsletters, but if over through a period of time, they have not bought anything, okay? So they do not compete, commit to any purchases. So this group of customers at this stage, they generally look warm. They are, they are trying to understand what you do. They're trying to say, okay, fine, you may have an offer that is interesting, but I'm not ready yet, okay? But they will still interact or either keep, keep on receiving your email addresses, uh, email uh, contents, for example. So your role in this group is to nurture them with content to give them thematic offers. Okay, for example, uh, like if you're a Malaysian, Malaysia Day, for example, uh, it could be a payday kind of offer. And you then monitor for engagement rates. Now, why is this important? Because they have signed up as they've indicated interest in your brand by signing up with your email address. But if they have not opened your emails at all, or they have not interacted with your emails, have not clicked your emails, for example, this is where you then start to do your cleansing or your email hygiene uh, maintenance, like Jeffrey has mentioned, where you then segregate people who have not opened for 30 days, or people have not opened or clicked for the last 60 days. That means they may not be interested, right? So you can either do win back campaigns to get them in, or eventually you may want to unsubscribe them yourself so that your emails will only be sent to people who really want to receive your emails. Not only that, who wants to read your emails uh, and interact with your emails. So email hygiene list uh, can be used in this case. Uh, for this group, it's very important, okay? So you gotta be prepared to play the long game. And the good thing with emails, you know, uh, like one year and also Jeffrey has mentioned, when you advertise and you get all the, what you call it, all the email lists in or subscribers in, uh, you spend one time, but they're on your list. And until and unless they unsubscribe, they will still remain on your list. So now you can continue to send emails to them to interact with them and all those things. And it costs you, practically costs you nothing. You know, Jeffrey has a, NJ Mail has a great offer. You can send 10,000 emails uh, a month and it's practically for free. So it's zero cost to you, right? So one thing that can be useful for you when, when it comes to dealing with this group who subscribe but did not buy is to look at, you know, flash shields, for example, or impulse buy offers, right? So these are the people that they are on the fence. So all you need is sometimes to excite them with new offers, new flash sales um, to trigger them to just make that purchase. So one of some of the examples, for example, you look at uh, Hush Puppies, they can do 30% off. Uh, you can look at this is a brand called uh, Destimoto. 
flash sales 50 percent off or even collins street bakery for example so these are the emails that you can send to the group that has subscribed but did not buy so you can actually you don't send to everyone so you can the, the thing the good thing about emails is I can be as precise as possible if your data is accurate to send the relevant emails to the right people. Okay. And finally, then you have your customers. Now this is easy, right? They are your warm audience. They already know you, they like you, they bought something for you already. It's just very clear. So the focus is to increase the commercial side of it, is to increase and also shortening the life, uh, lifetime value of the customers, right? Increasing the lifetime value in the sense that you want to make them new offers, you want to bring them, get them to buy more, right? And shortening the LTV, for example, is to add, increase the level of frequency. Okay, so those are the those are the levers that you can play when you're dealing with your customers by using emails. And opportunities, obviously, in this case, you know, you can cross sells, you can do upsells, you can even do subscription if you have any. Okay, right. So customers, you've got to make them feel like they're part of your community, all right? End of the day, the guy who is making that purchase is a human being, and it is nice to be acknowledged uh, as part of your circle, okay? So what you do with email is to, the nurturing part is to basically give them new information, uh, give them exclusive information so that they feel that they are part of that club, okay? And value-added content, for example, that can help improve their lives. That's one of them. Uh, and it's also great for product testing or even new launches. Because they are already part of your mem uh, part of your buyer's group, you can then, for example, you know, communicate with them through email and say, hey, we're looking at something like this. We've got a new product and it's supposed to do this. What do you think of it? You, know, you can do a poll with them. But you don't do a poll with people who subscribe but you don't buy. Neither do you do a poll for people who are just browsing. All right, but this group, because they are they are your customers, they have an extra incentive, okay. And especially if you treat them well, they will treat you back well as well, okay. So you can make them their promoter, and you can do stuff like priority sales. So whenever you want to do a launch and you want to have a, a you want to be able to collect huge numbers of sales upfront so that you can actually use their testimonials, and use it in your marketing or your advertising, for example, talk to these people. Talk to your customers, give them extra incentive to actually make that purchase so that now your launch basically takes off faster. So you can do stuff like value content and sales, right? Like Vero does, you know, uh, they give you content in emails. So not all emails need to be selling emails. For your customers, you need to do extra miles, for example, like, you know, even uh, what brand is this? Um, Harry's, for example. You know, grown man's guide to getting a baby face. Now you can obviously slip in a link that links them to a product that's relevant to this content. That's one way of doing it. But it's very subtle, like one you says. You don't have to be upfront selling, selling all the way. Provide content and then give them a link for them to take the next step. Okay. Upgrades is another option. You know, you know basically uh, what they bought, you know how long they've been using it. So I ideas like you know, restock emails is another form of upgrades. Uh, upgrading to the next level is another form of uh, approach that you could use with your emails. So I'll talk about you know, uh, early bird sales, priority sales. These are the things that you can do um, for, your customer, uh, for your customers. You know, they, they are your special group. So treat them nice and treat them well. Give them the priorities up front. Okay? Make sure that, uh, for example, like circles, they call it circle makers. Right? So make sure that you address them as part of your group. So now we move to the next part, which is talking about writing your emails. Okay, uh, Jeffrey has touched upon it briefly. I think one you has done that. The idea of write emails is you start with only one big idea. Okay, and then this one big idea. Uh, also, the next thing you want to do is basically you want to also whenever you write an email, you want to your reader to feel you want to know what you want your reader to feel, uh, to experience or to do before you write the email. So you get one big idea, you want the experience that you want to create for them. And then the third one is the next thing they need to do. The one thing to do, which is either to click the button or your link, okay? It does not net necessarily to uh, a sale, it could a uh, sales page, it could be the YouTube video. It could be a video content that you have created, for example. It could be a tutorial. That is also a CTA 
um, and also a form of engagement for your, for your emails. And most importantly, keep it simple, right? Jeffrey has mentioned that uh, the trend is moving towards simplicity. I mean, because there's just too much noise out there now, it is, as, it is end of the day, it's just an email. So keep it simple, right? So the six parts of the emails that you need to be aware of, and Jeffrey has touched that a bit earlier, your from name, okay, is basically to allow you to create familiarity, and also you can use it as a pattern interrupt. Now, how do you use it as a pattern interrupt? We did a we did a case for I did a case for for a client. They were using a company name all this while when they sent an email, but when there was a time when they wanted to do a promotion and it was tied it was tied to the payday promotion, we I basically suggested them that they change the corporate name into a payday deal instead. That actually grew the opens by more than the grew the opens by three hundred percent, and then the number of click through actually grew by 1,003 because once you get more people to open, naturally you would have, assuming your content is correct or done right, your click through would be higher also. So your from name is important, okay, because it gives you familiarity. Then the next thing moving down is your subject line also your pre header text, okay. Jeffrey has touched upon the importance of uh, subject lines. The pre header text can be used intelligently to support your subject line. So you got to be creative with this. And the from name, subject line, and pre edit text are the key determinants of your open rates or the success of your open rates of your emails. These are the three components. Okay. Then you move into your content. Now, content, your first paragraph will be your hook. You create something that gets them to want to read to the next, uh, next paragraph. That's the art of copywriting. Okay. First paragraph leads you to the second paragraph, leads you to the third paragraph, and so on and so forth. Okay. Then your body content is your story your context, your offer. So in e-commerce emails, primarily it's going to be a lot more visual. Okay. So your hero product is very important. The positioning of your hero products is very important in your content itself. And then finally the CTA. Okay. Go to the shop, uh, click on this, get your special coupon, for example, or use your special coupon, for example. Uh, when you have touched about that, one single CTA will be sufficient at most, like Jeffrey suggested, two. Okay? Nothing more because your emails are supposed to be simple. Give them your context, what you want them to do. Tell them how they do it. Give them the link for them to do it. And that's it. All right? So what sort of campaign ideas that, that you want to, um, that you can leverage for your emails? Okay? This is one of the things that a lot of people get stuck with. Um, first, the other one is writing an email. The second thing is what do I do? How do I run it? So here are some examples that you can use for your campaign ideas. Now, for every single campaign, it is wise to run between three to five emails uh, for that particular campaign. Now, the reason why is this. Uh, not everybody will open on the first email, primarily because everybody is busy. Uh, if you, depending on the time you send, for example, uh, they may not open it or they may not be in the right frame of mind to open it. But the, by virtue of you spreading that emails, and you can use different angles, okay? The art is not to send the same email five times. The art is to same different angles of the emails, but asking you to do the same thing five times, all right? So you can run a series of emails for this. Then you can also be, you know, uh, there are some examples that one year shared. You can play around with email campaigns teams. You know, birthday is an obvious case, right? Uh, you can also look at little known dates like, you know, hamburger days, hot dog days, for example, and figure out a way to tie in into your promotion or your product that you may want to sell. You may not necessarily need to run a promotion, but it could tie to a product that you have that has consistent with the theme of the day. So basically use this as an excuse for you to, um, for you to just send an email to them, okay? So having variety in your email contest helps because the emails is supposed to either educate, to entertain, or also to inspire. These are the three things that the emails need to do. So the more emails you send, the more revenue you make. Why? Because you have increased your touch point with your users or your readers. So finally, we're talking about the seven must have automations. Okay. When you have touched about it and she actually has a few more examples. So I'm going to just do the seven uh, that I think is relevant that you can start off immediately. Okay. So the first one, obviously, is your welcome email. And I put in some examples here that to give you an idea, your welcome email 
doesn't need to be that boring. Okay, uh, you 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 can write short copy. You don't have to write long paragraphs. But the idea is you got to create a some sort of fun, uh, be entertaining for them. Okay, so and it's also representation of your brand. Okay, so Fable has one. Dims has simple welcome emails. You know, even Pack Help, for example. So these are the examples, and uh, you will get them in the slides when uh, Sidak shares them with you. The second thing is browse abandonment. Okay, so when you do browse abandonment, basically is they come to your website, probably look at certain page or probably look at certain sites, and they they leave. So your browse abandoned emails are basically now that this one will only work if you have captured their emails up front. So if somebody who does not give you an email, that that's impossible because I've, there's no email for me to send anyways. But if I sign up and from time to time I come to the page again, this email can trigger them primarily to remind them that hey, you've been looking at this page. You know, would you be interested? Right, so these emails can use as trigger points. An example could be like this, you know, still thinking about it, you know, or either some if you go to the page and you look at certain bags, for example, and you can just be how could I, you, you kind of have some cheeky emails they send that hey, did you leave something behind? Right, so this, these are the things that actually drives people to want to read your emails because it's not, it's not your traditional. Hey, here's what you want, and here's what we can do. Right? So think about it. Be creative with it. Have fun with it. Okay? So cut a better but you know, seven out of ten stats have shown that people who who put things on the card did not buy. And one year I've mentioned, I've said it very clearly. Like you know, some of them actually use your card as a wish list collection of wish lists. So that happens. So your card abandonment sequence, for example, can be used to actually remind them the items again. So uh, the berries uh, uh, approach could be something that like one year have su suggested. The berries approach could be something you can do, uh, or you can just remind them that these are the things that they have uh, put in your cart, but you have not taken the next step. Okay, it does not necessarily always be uh, giving them discounts. You know, Jeffrey has mentioned you know, certain digital people like us, we will purposely add to cart without transacting, knowing that very well the next day we're going to have an email that's going to offer discounts. You do not necessarily need to do that. Okay, you just need to remind them. Talk about the benefits. Talk about the things that they could be missing out. That could be good enough for them to, for you to get them across the line to become a customer. Okay, so uh, like Dot has a very nice, uh, you know, has a very nice self-effacing kind of emails and say your shopping bag has abandonment issues, right? So these are the things that capture people. These are the things that is out of the ordinary, not common. Okay. Then you have post purchase. Post purchase, they have already bought something from you. Now you can actually show them something else of interest, primarily because you already know the SKU that they bought. Now you can match it with other SKUs as well, that you can actually encourage them. And this is the part where you increase your LTVs, or either you accelerate the LTVs already of your users. Okay. So Crate and Barrel have some thanks. I'm going to go through all of them because I think we've got half an hour, so I'm going to make, make full use. You can look at the emails in the uh, handouts later. Uh, but some of them, these are some of the examples that you have. Birthdays, why you want to collect uh, birthdays? Because people are humans. So you can use this as uh, emails to recognize a special occasion, right? So it could be, you know, obviously birthday is the easiest one to the least, uh, well, least resistant kind of data that you can collect. You know, if you ask her for anniversary, maybe it will be tough. But there are ways in email that you can eventually piece this data together to the interaction with your email. Okay. So uh, we will go into deeper when, you know, I think the masterclass we have covered this, but these are the next level of email marketing where you can track based on the user's click without having to ask them for more information, okay? And I think this is transactional. So transactional, you know, uh, reinforce confidence. This one basically like ritual, sign, seal, and snooze. The idea is to prevent bias remorse, number one. Number two is to remind them to build anticipation of the product that's being shipped to you. You know, every time we buy something, the next thing, the moment we make a purchase, we want it like, if possible, like now, 
Okay, so emails like this keeps on feeding that momentum so that they keep your product in mind. And these are the good times or the best time because they will definitely open your emails, especially shipping information, order information. Transaction emails is great. And what you can do is you can do your cross sales. You can also add stuff that is complementary to the products they buy. Okay, so this is the other ways of you to increasing the revenue with your email marketing. And finally, like people who have not opened your emails for 30 days, 60 days, like I mentioned earlier, you can use winback emails or winback campaigns. Right? Now, winback campaigns are very simple. It's basically to just rekindle that person's that love with you, with your brand, with a gift. You know, it could be, you know, uh, give them something extra, for example, or give them an extension of your trial if you're doing trial. Uh, or either give them another excuse to come back, okay? For example, maybe your first version of your product may not be that good. That's fine. But once you have an upgrade, you can actually get back to people who have uh, have not interacted and then say, hey, we've got something new. Why don't you come back and have a look, okay? And because emails, you can do it in automated form, this one requires very little uh very little effort for you to do it. You require some planning. You know, like if you look at one year's chart where she did the sequence, those are the things that people like us, email marketers, do. we go all the way there, but we actually plan them correctly and then we write those emails accordingly. And from time to time, we may change the content, but generally the moment we put into automation, it runs for us 24-7. That's the beauty of email marketing. So remember this. Uh, just the final slide. Social or social media ads are great for reach, no question. They are awesome if you want to get virality, for example. Nobody gets virality through email, okay? You can only get that from social media. But emails is awesome for revenue because you have this one-to-one -one communication. You can custom your message according to the users, according to the group of users. You can custom them according to their purchasing habits. You can custom them according to their the amount or so-called the frequency they open your emails. There are so many things you can do. And when the person receives an email, as far as they're concerned, you could be sending to 100 million people. But as far as they're concerned, that email coming from you in your inbox and you write your content uh, correctly and it's personalized to, the, to him or her, for example, it is very special. Okay? So social is great for reach. Emails is great for revenue. 